Welcome back to the mysteriously growing and portable indie comic book vault. Um, as you're no doubt aware by now, um, kind of world-renowned uh, comic book artist Darwin Cook has recently passed away. And everybody, most everybody at Geekvolution is doing some kind of video about something he's done. Um, and so I'm going to be talking about The Hunter which is the first book of uh, Darwin Cook's adaptations of Richard Stark's Parker novels. Um, I read this maybe two months ago, uh, just because people had been saying how good these books were, and then when uh, Darwin Cook passed away, and everyone was kind of like, oh, I want to do this, oh, I want to do this, I was like, oh, well... I have this thing by Darwin Cook that I recently read, that I really liked, that I'd like to talk about. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, with Darwin Cook, you know, everyone really loves Darwin Cook. I've, I've never really gotten into his work. Um, I've read some things by him here and there, but I've never had a major connection to his work. Uh, kind of until this book. Uh, reading this book made me really want to read the rest of the books in uh, the Parker series. Uh, and everyone has always said New Frontier is really good. I, I've kind of want I kind of want to check that out. I've always wanted to check out his uh, the Spirit Run, which I want to say I read the first volume of a long, long, long time ago, and just didn't get it. Um, but so yeah, unlike a lot of the people you know doing videos about Darwin Cook, I don't have a huge connection with him. Um, He's someone that, like, I was always aware people really liked, but never really got into. Um, and kind of just as I was getting into him, he passed away, and that's a huge bummer, because there's not going to be any more work from him. I, I, you know, once once I go back and catch up on all the stuff I missed, it's not like there's going to be there's going to be new stuff, so that that's a bummer. Um, one of the things uh, about this review that's going to be kind of different from how I normally review things is I'm going to talk about the story and characters very, very lightly. Uh, what I really want to talk about uh, with this is the art and the adaptation. Um, so, the story, of Par or the story of the hunter is about Parker. Parker is a thief, and Parker has this routine where he, um, he and his wife, he goes and he pulls a job and he makes so much money. Just enough money that him and his wife can go stay and vacation, just kind of live the high, high life uh, for a while. And then when that money starts getting low, he goes and he does another job. Um, so he's kind of got everything set for himself. He knows exactly, you know, what he's doing. At the start of this book, he, uh, he's been double-crossed and left for dead. And then he kind of goes on a, on, a, on a spree of revenge that escalates really surprisingly, uh, which I'm going to talk about uh, when, when I talk about um, how, how well it's adapted, possibly, um, because this, this book really escalates uh, in ways that I didn't expect from a standard kind of revenge plot. Uh, there's a lot of universe building going on. Uh, it reminds me, or I guess re reverse really should be true, but it, it reminds me of John Wick, where John Wick's a story that very clearly exists in an established universe with established rules. Uh, the Hunter works much the same way. The Hunter uh, is very, very clearly in a universe. Um, and I'm... I'm not sure if that's in the book or if that's from later books, uh, but I'll talk about that as I kind of talk about the adaptation process. Uh, but first, I, I want to talk about the artwork. Um, the artwork is astounding. Um, one of the things that's really amazing about this is when you think of noir, you're thinking of um, 
You're generally thinking of movies from the 40s that are based on slash inspired by books from the 40s and the 30s. The Parker books uh, take place in the 60s, or at least I believe they do. That's clearly where the, uh, this graphic novel takes place is in the 60s. Um, actually, it has a date, 1962. It tells you right up front when it takes place. It takes place in 1962. Um, and so there's this very interesting blend of the very, like, dark, rough, rugged kind of 40s sensibilities with the very sleek, mod 60s look um, that I wouldn't necessarily immediately think would go together. Uh, when I think 60s, I don't think shadows. Um, I think very bright and very colorful. Uh, it, and it should be noted, the book is all in black and white. Um, well... Black and white isn't exactly how I'd describe it. It's black and white and gray, but almost a greenish or bluish gray. Uh, there's a very interesting use of grayscale. He doesn't just... This doesn't look like a black and white book, uh, or a, tradi a traditional black and white book, but it also doesn't look like something like, say, uh, Sin City, where... Since he doesn't look like a normal black and white book, because it's almost, it's almost white on black, uh, where the shadows almost make more of the image than the actual white of the paper. Um, this does a uh, with this Darwin Cook does a really interesting and astounding job of being able to make pages look very very forties film noir. And then the immediate next page looks like a really sleek, crisp 60s book. Uh, and then you have, you have images and pages that kind of blend the two. Uh, in, uh, in Steve's review for the, uh, for the Spirit, he refers to the book as sexy, uh, which is exactly what I would refer to this book as. It's very sexy. Uh, in, in almost two ways simultaneously... It has that James Bond, you know, 60s sleek sexiness, uh, like, um, like Mad Men, but it also has that kind of foreboding, haunted sexiness of, like, 40s film noir, uh, and, you know, the hard-boiled novels that inspired those, uh, it's really, really interesting how, how well it's designed and how well it works. Um, most of the time when I think of crime movies in the 60s, it's almost a farce. Like, I guess I think of, like... I can't even think of a Coen Brothers movie off the top of my head, but I would think of, like, Coen Brothers, uh, where it's, it's, it's not... I, I guess where it's 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 a farce. It's not really like cutthroat and dark, uh, and this is this is very much a. Uh, I want to say Raymond Chandler because Raymond Chandler is my go-to for hard-boiled fiction, but it's it's bleaker than Raymond Chandler. Um, I guess to to bring up Sin City again, uh, Frank Miller has said that Dwight is highly inspired by. Uh, Raymond Chandler's uh, Philip Marlowe, who is kind of this guy who's not the best guy, but he lives in a world that's so dirty and and messed up that he becomes the knight. He becomes the beacon of light in all this darkness, even though he's kind of not the best person himself. I wouldn't be surprised if Marv from Sin City was inspired by Parker. Uh, Parker's a big guy, he's got really big hands, and he is not a good person. Uh, he's very, uh, like, baseline instinctual. Um, I, I know this isn't the first character that, that exists like this, but I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, Parker wasn't, was an influence on characters like, uh, Wolverine, or even somebody like Dirty Harry who is, is a better person than, 
than Parker. Parker is a bad guy doing bad things. Um, and you're kind of rooting for him, but also kind of not. Uh, it's, it's really interesting how it kind of balances. Some of the people he gets revenge on... He's getting revenge because they tried to murder him, and that's wrong. But some of them are so helpless and so just they're weaker than Parker and you almost feel like he shouldn't be murdering these people but you're kind of on his side uh, because everybody everybody in this book are, are bad people for the most part um, there's this fantastic bit where uh, he tries to get in contact with the head of the syndicate who is you know, you know that's that's the mafia uh, the Mafia's original name was the Syndicate. Um, and so he forces this guy to call his boss. And he tells him to call his boss. And then he murders the guy that he's with and says, all right, now if you don't call your boss, I'm going to come find you. And I'm going to murder you and tell whoever you call. I, I messed it up. But that's basically he just kind of murders somebody on the phone and then says, all right, get your boss in line or I'm going to come kill you. He's almost like a force of nature, but he's not, he's not a good guy. And, uh, he's not depicted as a good guy. There's, there's not, we don't sympathize with Parker as a person. You're almost swayed and impressed by him. Uh, that he's just a man of such conviction. Uh, but I, I, I just, I, I think the artwork is, is, is really astounding. And I wonder if, on some level, this was almost Darwin Cook proving that he could do something like this. Uh, because I know he's talked before about how he kind of gets, he kind of get, got typecast as the fun Golden Age guy. And that those were the kinds of projects that everyone was bringing him. And he's like, I don't want to just do that. So he, with this, he does a project that his art style perfectly suits, but is also very dark and very brutal. Um, I would call it cynical, but I don't think it's cynical. Um, it's almost matter of fact in the in the way it goes in go it goes about it. Um, there's not a sense of like laughing at how twisted everything is, or you know, there's no character kind of looking at this world and bemoaning you know how awful everything is. You know, it's it's not it's not like you know Philip Marlowe where he is the the beacon of light. He the the book is very, very matter-of-fact about the world that it is. Um, much like um, something like John Wick, where, you know, John Wick's the good guy of that movie, and he's a much better person than than Parker is, uh, and has a better motivation. But the film itself doesn't really pass judgment on that world of crime. Um, it almost respects it. And that's kind of how, 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 the, how this book plays out. Um, now, the other, the other thing that I really want to talk about is uh, the adaptation. Uh, because, man, can I say uh more? Because comic book adaptations of books don't really get a lot of respect. Or a lot of attention paid to them. I think this is because a lot of book adaptations are just not good. We have a tendency to, for adaptations of novels, we almost just do illustrated novels, where we just kind of take as much text as we possibly can, uh, and we plaster them, we plaster caption boxes all over the pictures, just to try and get as much of the book's text into the comic, and it becomes, uh, I, most, most, uh, comics I've read that are adaptations of novels are very tedious reads, and almost feel like, why wouldn't you just read the, the book, if, if you're gonna put this much of the book in it, 
Here, there is one section... Uh, I was actually surprised when I was looking over this to take pictures, uh, because as I read it, there was one section that um, I felt kind of dipped into that a little bit, where there was like four pages straight of just like text upon text upon text that's clearly lifted straight from the book. Uh, but as I was looking through it, I realized there's a lot of pages like that. Uh, but maybe it's just because they're single pages, it didn't feel intrusive. There was, just, there was only, there's only one section of the book uh, that feels like it's that just, well, here's the book with pictures. Um, in fact, the opening of this book is about 20 pages that's almost entirely dialogueless. Uh, there's a point where there's like a page where there's some dialogue, and then it goes right back to being dialogueless. Um, there's no, there's like one caption at the very beginning, and then it's just, it's just panels. It's just silent panels. And it, 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 it's amazing. Um, I don't know how much of the book that is. I've, I've never, I've never read any of the Parker novels. Um, but, you know, that, that could be him taking a paragraph from the book, or that could be him taking, you know, the first 30 pages of the book. I'm not sure. Because it's just kind of Parker walking and doing things. And you just see him walk and you see him doing things. It's very show, don't tell. And I, I've, I can't think of any other time I've seen an adaptation in a comic book, uh, where it does something like that, where it, it, it's, it's risky enough to just rely on the art to convey what's happening. Um, I think that these, that these Parker books, I believe there are six of them. Um, I think they kind of started a little bit of a shift. I've, uh, more and more, I think we're seeing adaptations of novels that are getting critical praise and are being uh, lauded as being both respectful to the source material and bringing their own voice. Um, the ones that come to, to my head specifically are the uh, I and J. Colbert uh, Lovecraft books. Um, but I think it's I. I there's there's a lot of things in this book where I wonder how much was changed. Um, like I said, there's this whole th there's this whole thing with the syndicate later that feels really big uh, for for this story, and I wonder if that was stuff from from maybe later books they brought in here to set some later stuff up. Um, but I'm not sure. I never felt like uh, I was reading someone just kind of drawing a script. Uh, and I feel like that's what a lot of uh, books adapted to comics feel like. It just it, like it just feels like a graphic novel. It just we're putting pictures to the words. This never feels like that. Um, this if you told me this wasn't based on anything, I'd believe that this wasn't based on anything. Um, you know those pages where there's just a lot of text, Sometimes comics have a lot of text. Bendis does pages like this all the time, uh, where it's just a picture with a lot of text. So, a lot of text doesn't necessarily feel novelly. Um, I don't know. It's just the way this is done. It feels like an original graphic novel. It doesn't feel like this is an adaptation of anything. And I think that's really the best compliment I can give it is that it flows so smoothly. It never feels like there's parts cut out or artificially added in. Um, I don't know if this is like a direct, like page for page adaptation of the book. I don't know if there's anything missing, and I don't know if there's anything added. Um, and even movies don't, you know, don't do that seamlessly. There's lots of movies I've seen where, like, you can you can tell you. Oh well, I bet this was explained in the book. Like, the Harry Potter books are rife with that, where there's just things you're like, well, I, this probably makes more sense if you read the book. Um, I don't have that with this. Uh, I kind of want to go read The Hunter and see how similar it feels or is to this book, but at the same time, I almost kind of feel like this this is the only version I need. I don't really need to go read the book. Uh, if the book's not this, I'll be disappointed. Um but I will definitely be checking out the the rest of the books in this series. Uh, so if you've not picked this up, I would I would highly, highly recommend this. Uh, but I will say it's an adult book. I don't think there's anything 
super, super... Uh, it, it's got really dark themes, and I, I think Darwin Cook does this really... It does a really good job of um, kind of playing with the darkness uh, and the fact that he draws very kind of cartoony figures. Um, he, he gets away with some really brutal stuff that I think would be more dis would be would would feel more distasteful if it was a much more graphic artist or a much more uh literal human figure artist uh the 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 moments almost have more weight because they're they're kind of cartoony um so yeah i i mean this is this is a serious crime novel this isn't um uh, this isn't superheroes. Uh, so, so I, I would give a caveat that it is a more mature book. Um, but no more so than I think anything else that would be crime related. Um, so yeah, uh, I think, I think the hunter is an absolutely fantastic book. Um, I can't wait to read the rest of them. Uh, I've heard they kind of just get better from here, but, uh, so yeah, I, I, I really love this. Uh, I think, uh, I, I think this is kind of the, what would you call it, the the roadmap for how to do an adaptation. I'd love to see more people do adaptations of books like this. Uh, specifically, uh, kind of men's adventure and like crime and a hard-boiled fiction, I think, could, could work really well like this. I'd love to see... Um, somebody that really loves the material and really has the artistry to bring it to life to do uh, a series that they're passionate about like this. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think it's a fantastic book. I would, I would definitely recommend it.